Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Welcome everyone. Um, <clears throat> we're happy to welcome you in this new Formlabs webinar today. Um, uh, so two things we're going to be talking about in this webinar is um, the Fuse One Plus 30 Watt, which is our newest SLS 3D printer from Formlabs. And we're also going to be introducing nil, uh, Nylon TF powder, which is our first carbon fiber filled uh, material. And what we want to discuss a little bit is how um, this will help you achieve rapid production uh, of high performance prototypes or durable induced parts in house. Um, so I am Maidi Latouche. I have been working at Formlabs for about five years and I was lucky enough to be the product marketing manager working on this launch. And with me today, we have the one and only Chris Haid. Um, so our SLS product manager. So Chris is a mechanical engineer who spent the last nine years working in the 3D printing industry. And um, now we have him in charge of developing the Formlabs SLS products. So he's gonna be the one running us through most of the details of the printer and material today. Um, all right, so um, if we can go to the next slide, I'm gonna um, talk a little bit about the agenda. So we're gonna do a very quick um, introduction just to talk about like why we're launching this Fuse One Plus 30 Watt, what is it? Um, and then I will pass it on to Chris where he's gonna be deep diving into the product. Um, so we're gonna explain a little bit what, uh, what it is, how it works. Um, and in particular, we're gonna talk about some new features um, to this printer compared to the Fuse One for the people who know the, the previous um, iteration of the machine. Um, and we've added a few use cases and to talk about um, speed and ROI with, uh, with the printer, just to give you a little bit of a concrete idea of what we can do with the printer. Um, on the material, we're also gonna talk about the, the material properties and some of the applications that are best fit for, for this type of powder. And we're gonna touch on uh, workflow and safety with, uh, with the material. Um, at the end of the presentation, we're going to do a live Q&A session. A lot of you probably have heard about Formlabs. So we uh, manufacture professional 3D printing solutions. So um, the printers, of course, but also the software and the materials. And um, what we want to do is make sure that anyone can make anything. So we did that with the Form 1 Plus in 2012. Um, we've extended the line with better and larger um, solutions. So you can see here the Form 3 Plus, the Form 3L, um, all the cost processing. And what we wanted to do was apply this to SLS. And so we created the Fuse One, uh, which started shipping in 2021. That was um, a, an industrial benchtop SLS um, solution for um, in-house production. And we got a lot of excitement, excitement from all types of, of users, from engineers to um, you know, manufacturers, um, also in the medical field. And um, in about 10 years, um, we've sold over 100,000 printers and those printers printed 100 million parts. So that is a lot. Um, today we're talking about the Fuse in particular. So um, we have seen a great pickup of, for the Fuse 1 since it launched last year. Um, about 50% of the SLS printers sold globally since then have been Fuse. So that is a very clear signal that um, people needed uh, an affordable solution so that they can also start using uh, this technology. And um, because we do like to uh, improve continuously our machines, we've been collecting feedbacks from users. Uh, we've been identifying some pain points and needs they have, and we wanted to deliver some innovations. So um, that takes us to the next slide and why we're, um, we're coming up with this new printer. So um, <clears throat> the Fuse One Plus 30 Watt is our high capability printer and it will cater to those users that require um, parts in hand faster. So that's whether they need a quick turnaround on prototypes or um, rapid small volume production. And it will also enable um, new exclusive materials. Um, the Fuse One, um, which is our current printer, remains available as our most accessible SLS solution for users that need uh, a reliable but plug and play solutions at a more affordable price point. So um, that was kind of the overview of what we'll be talking about today. Um, I will be passing the mic to Chris now uh, as he explains um, all of the details of how we managed to make it 
uh, faster and bring new materials. So over to you, Chris. Wonderful. Thank you, Miley, for that marvelous introduction. We'll start off today with uh, Fuse 1 plus 30 watt. So for a quick overview of the product, you might've heard of the, the Fuse 1, which we released about a, a year and a half, a little bit more than a year and a half ago. Uh, now we have the Fuse 1 plus uh, 30 watt. We'll go into a little bit of detail as to what that 30 watt means and what that plus means on top of the Fuse 1. But the main things that we're really enabling with this new printer are higher print speeds. So we're able to, to print out our parts much faster than we are on the Fuse 1. Uh, we have a wider range of materials, so we're starting to enable uh, industrial grade materials, uh, more, mate more powerful materials that um, go beyond the, the performance of what we have um, on common SLS printers and even on what we have on the Fuse one today. Um, and finally, we have a great improvement to our uh, reusability and recyclability of powder, uh, enabling more of our users to get to a point where they're using, uh, getting to zero waste with their powder consumption and getting to that ROI a little bit faster. But the uh, the one, one thing that I, I love to stick in my mind about this printer, um, that's the most exciting thing for, for how I use it every day, is that I'm now able to get parts printed out um, in the matter of uh, hours rather than days generally. So we're able to, especially here at Formlabs, share uh, printers amongst large numbers of people. Um, sometimes there's a waiting list. Our, our list to, uh, to get on a printer is much shorter. And once you do get on a printer, your prints are coming out that much faster. So I'm very excited to share this capability with the rest of the world as we get this product out there. So to dig into some of the, uh, the improvements that we have here. So first we have the superior print speeds. This is enabled by two main improvements to the printer. One you might've guessed is that we have a 30 watt laser that we put into the printer now. This is three times more powerful than the 10 watt laser that we have on the Fuse 1. Uh, so we're able to deposit energy at that laser spot much faster than we were able to previously. Um, second, to go along with this, we found that actually, um, once we increased our laser power by 300%, uh, we found that our Galvo system on the Fuse 1 was not able to take advantage of that uh, full speed improvement that the, the new laser was able to, uh, to enable for us. So we re-engineered our Galvo system and now we're able to spin our Galvos much faster, move that laser dot across the print bed much faster than we were able to before and take full advantage of that 30 watt laser. So what this gives us is much shorter layer times. Um, our, our recoding time is roughly the same as before, but the time that it takes to, to laze each layer is drastically improved. Uh, we're able to scan that dot across the, the print bed at up to 12.5 meters per second. So running as fast as a human can, can run, maybe even a little bit faster than that. And ultimately compared to Fuse 1, we're printing at up to twice the speeds that we see on the Fuse 1 today, depending on geometry. And we'll go into a few details of that later. So really what the, uh, the value that this provides is uh, faster turnaround for rapid prototypes, tooling fixtures and jigs. Um, and for those that are doing uh, printing as a service, either internally, externally, or doing serial production with Fuse, uh, this enables you to get many more parts out faster and get to that uh, higher throughput that you might be looking for. On the side of the, the materials, what have we done here? Well, Miley alluded that, to that earlier on. Uh, we have nylon 11 carbon fiber, which is similar to our nylon 11 material that we have today, but we've added carbon fiber into it. So this gives us uh, much advanced material properties. I'm, I'm very excited to go into some more detail uh, later on, uh, but this is courtesy of a new powder handling system that we have in the printer uh, that enables us to work with a greater range of powders than we are able to on the Fuse 1 today. Um, additionally, we have a, a nitrogen purge, which gives us a higher capability of producing good, consistent, um, and high mechanical property parts. Um, that don't undergo any uh, oxidation during the printing process. So that helps with maintaining good print properties um, at a low competitive refresh rate. And then finally, uh, what else really gets us to that, that zero waste printing, getting to that fast ROI? Um, part of it is the, the nitrogen generator or nitrogen purge system, I should say. Um, we'll talk more about nitrogen generators and supplies later, um, but uh, what we're able to do with a nitrogen purge is we're, we're getting all of that oxygen or most of that oxygen out of the print chamber and preventing that powder from oxidizing uh, when it's at temperature in the printing process. So this allows us to um, preserve that quality of the powder 
um, and not require as much new powder um, in the sift in order to maintain those high mechanical properties of parts. Uh, this has the greatest impact on nylon 11 based materials. So the nylon 11 we have today, uh, plus the nylon 11 carbon fiber that we've just introduced, uh, see a, a drastic benefit going from a 15, 50% refresh rate in air down to a 30% refresh rate um, in the nitrogen atmosphere. Um, this is an option. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but the other aspect is this goes hand in hand with our improved packing algorithm, which we, we've been improving several times. And uh, I think as of maybe last October, we had some, some major improvements to it. Uh, but with our, our packing algorithm, plus the improved refresh rate courtesy of nitrogen, uh, we're, we're enabling many of our customers to get to a point of zero waste uh, in their 3D printing process with Fuse 1 plus 31. So a few, a few uh, comparisons just to have it all in one place so you can see it real quick for everything we discussed above. Fuse 1 is a 10 watt laser. Fuse 1 plus 30 watt uses a 30 watt laser. So we're able to crank out parts much faster than we were able to before. On Fuse 1, we have our core material set. So we have our nylon 12, our nylon 11, and glass filled uh, nylon 11, or nylon 12, I should say. Uh, we have all of these on the Fuse 1 plus. Uh, but more. So we're able to support all the materials that we had previously, uh, but due to our updated system, we're able to handle uh, a greater range of materials. And I'll speak as to how we actually handle that. Um, for our print environment, we have air on the Fuse 1, uh, but we have the option to print in either air on the Fuse 1 plus 30 watt or in nitrogen. Uh, this is a bring your own nitrogen system. Uh, so we'll talk about some of the nitrogen sources that you can use for it, uh, but it is an option. So you don't have to use nitrogen if you're uh, just wanting to get the fuse, get it up and running, but don't uh, need to want to have the extra setup for that. Uh, but you are fully enabled to do so with the new printer. And then uh, finally, in terms of efficiency, uh, we're able to get low waste printing on the fuse one due to our competitive refresh rates, and we're able to get to uh, much lower waste and even potentially zero waste in many cases on the Fuse 1 plus 30 watt due to that, uh, that nitrogen purge system. So a few features, what, what enables all this, this goodness that we've come up with in the last year and a half? Uh, one is we've updated our powder management system. So this is our hopper um, and everything from the, the hopper up until the doser in the printer uh, for delivering powder from the uh, the hopper where we're storing it all the way into the printer. Um, what we've done for this is we've actually updated the hopper geometry. Um, we've done tons of testing simulation to find how do you make powder flow, which turns out to be a very, very difficult engineering problem, especially when you have different powders and different humidities, different temperatures, uh, different refresh rates. Uh, you, you need to be able to, to create one hopper that can handle it all. And uh, sometimes powder gets, likes to get uh, caught up in that hopper. Uh, especially when we have new materials like carbon fiber, nylon 11, which does like to uh, pump up sometimes and not flow through. So to solve that problem and give ourselves good high uh, efficiency with our dosing and good high reliability uh, is we added an agitator into there. So if uh, powder does start to get clogged up in there at all, we have an, uh, an active agitator that uh, essentially does a spinning motion and keeps that powder flowing through. So that agitator, combined with the new hopper geometry, allows us to handle a much wider range of materials uh, than we can on the Fuse 1 today. Um, so this gives us increased reliability and a greater range of materials for what we can do with this new printer. Uh, we have an inert gas atmosphere. So you'll see, you might've noticed that the, the printer looks very similar to the Fuse 1. We're built on the same hardware platform uh, that we've been improving for reliability and usability uh, since we launched it. But the one of the, uh, the distinct differences that you might see is if you look on the, the back side of the printer, there is now a little, uh, little port where you can put in a quick connect uh, hose and pump in nitrogen into the system. So this is uh, one of the very few uh, changes to the external hardware that we see now. Uh, this is again, an option. You can choose to not use the nitrogen system. You can choose to use the nitrogen system and all the control that you need for it is on the user interface on the, the touch screen on the front of the unit. Uh, but what does this enable? It really prevents the, uh, the powder during the printing process. While we're, we're at those high temperatures, you know, 150 degrees Celsius, or greater, uh, we're preventing that uh, that powder from grabbing oxygen from the air. It's sticking to the powder, 
um, and thus uh, essentially degrading the powder and causing us to require a greater amount of fresh powder to maintain those good mechanical properties. Now that we're getting all of that oxygen out of there, um, we're able to have a longer lifetime of that powder um, at a higher, um, higher set of mechanical properties so that when we print it the next time, we don't need to refresh it as much and we can maintain those high mechanical properties that we uh, expect to see um, as we continue through our generations of printing. Um, one thing to mention is that this is certainly most noticeable on nylon 11 based materials since they um, kind of degrade by this oxidation pathway. Um, nylon 12 materials do see some benefit. We, we do see uh, an increase in ductility, but it is um, a bit smaller, um, uh, maybe on the order of a, a few percent or so increase in the EAB um, for nylon 12 based materials, uh, whereas we're getting much more drastic swings uh, with maintaining very high material properties on nylon 11. So I talked about how do we get nitrogen? This is a bring your own nitrogen printer. Uh, where do I get nitrogen? So we have kind of two recommendations depending on what you're trying to do for if you're, um, if you're set on using nitrogen, you want these good mechanical properties at that low refresh rate. Um, what we recommend is a nitrogen generator. And this is a device that typically will plug into a uh, compressed air supply and then on one side, and then on the other side plugs right into the printer's quick connect hose valve um, or port. And from there, you're just about good to go. So this is a great system because it doesn't require the, uh, the moving in and out of nitrogen cylinders, um, which is the, the second option um, is to get those, those large 50 liter uh, cylinders of nitrogen trucked in from, from air gas, Praxair, or whatever your gas supplier might be. Um, we recommend um, if you want to use bottled nitrogen in these gigantic cylinders, um, just use it for testing, maybe your first few prints, your first few runs. The reason for this is one of those large 50 liter cylinders are, are about as tall as I am. Um, you'll require maybe two, maybe even more of those cylinders for a full build volume print. Um, so they're, they're just uh, a little bit tricky to, uh, to have two of those cylinders go through every print. You need to change them out, get them on the truck, bring new ones in um, on a, a weekly basis or whatever it needs to be. So uh, we recommend that for, for trying it out. If you just want to see, does this really help me get the parts that I need at that refresh rate that I need? Um, otherwise, we certainly recommend um, investing in a nitrogen generator to have this supply um, right on your desktop without having to move things in and out. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.